Here we have the Acer Aspire Z24 All-in-One series. And while there's nothing particularly innovative about it, it is a very classic looking all-in-one. So let's dive a little deeper into it and uh, figure out who it's for, what's good about it, uh, what's bad about it, and um, if you may want one. So right off the bat, it's not the most innovative machine in the world. If you compare it with the Lenovo Think Center that we just reviewed, which has a magnet or a, a wireless charging uh, station in the base, it's got that cool copper pipe, it's got expandable storage, and it's got a camera that recesses into the frame. This has, as you can see, none of those things. Now that's not necessarily a bad thing. Few machines are as innovative. iMac, for example, doesn't have any of that stuff, but it's still a great machine. This is no different. This is also a great computer. A lot of things that I do like about it, it is very, very fast. Uh, it's got an, in, a ninth generation Intel i5, eight gigs of RAM, 512 gigabyte uh, solid state flash storage, and that's all for about $700. You can't really beat that price. You also get a 24 inch full high definition screen. It's not a touch screen, although it can be optioned with one if you want, but uh, the clarity, the viewing angle, colors, brightness, all of that stuff is, is very good. It's also got really good speakers. I would say probably a little bit better than the Lenovo. Now, it's not anything high fidelity. If you're an audiophile looking for, uh, you know, to listen to your music, you're still wanna, uh, gonna, gonna wanna get a good pair of headphones or some speakers, but uh, all in all, if you need them in a pinch, they're, they're certainly very good. Uh, camera quality at the top is good, but all in all, it's just a fast machine for a good price. Comes with a wireless keyboard and mouse, which I love. There's really no excuse for computers to come with a wired keyboard and mouse anymore, but some still do, including the Lenovo. And uh, this has the wireless keyboard and mouse, which was a nice touch. Uh, the input and output on this computer is very good. On the back, we have three USB 3 ports. We have a USB-C port. We have a gigabit ethernet, two HDMIs, and then an audio jack. So if you need to expand things like your storage with external hard drives and stuff like that, you absolutely can. Who is this computer for? Uh, largely, I would say that this is for anybody with a small business. You know, during this COVID stuff, we're obviously all working from home. This is good for a home-based business. It's good for a nonprofit. This computer has a tons of horsepower for productivity tasks. So things like Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Outlook, tons of Chrome and Firefox tabs. You're gonna be able to do Photoshop in this uh, thing pretty well. So if you're editing RAWs, you have uh, enough storage to store most of your RAWs on the internal drive. Uh, again, with 512 gigs of storage uh, with this one option. So again, with the i5, it's just gonna be very powerful. It's gonna be able to edit Photoshop very, uh, very easily. You'll also be able to do a bit of audio editing, probably a bit of audio capturing as well if you're using one of the expandable uh, USB ports. And um, you could probably do a little bit of light level video editing, although, um, you know, I, I really, it, it's not meant for that. Uh, this, this, if you want to do video editing of any kind, you probably should go to either something with a higher uh, resolution screen or maybe even a little bit more power. But certainly if you're doing some, um, some light level video editing, you know, either Zoom conferences or something like that, this thing will do just fine. Uh, let's go over a few things that I don't particularly care for. The bulge here at the top. There's a lot more in here than just the camera. You know, they've got uh, ambient sensor, camera, a couple of microphones in there. So there's a lot that they're jamming in that thing, but I can't help but feel like they were able to maybe squeeze that together a little bit. Now that's obviously an aesthetic preference, so uh, that may not bother some people, and it's certainly not a deal breaker, but ideally I wish, <clears throat> excuse me, ideally I wish that that was maybe just a little bit smaller. They took so much time and attention into making sure that the bezels were small on this computer, uh, that it's uh, this just sort of stands out as something a little bit careless. And speaking of the bezels, that is something that I do love about this machine. Uh, this has a smaller form, uh, a smaller footprint <clears throat> than the iMac 21 and a half inch. But because it has smaller bezels, you get a larger screen. This one has a 24, 23.8 to be specific. But uh, it's smaller than the 21 and a half inch iMac. Yet you have more screen space. And I'm not sure why Apple hasn't jumped aboard the small bezel uh, or bezel list screens yet, but with their IMAX, but they just haven't. So, you know, what are you gonna do? Small bezels, looks really sharp. When using this computer, this is not, this is not a deal breaker. I did experience a little bit of uh, some small hum. Basically the fan is running in the background, um, even under no load. So I mean, it's, uh, you know, when it's just sitting there, you can hear just this, this tiny little kind of purring coming from the computer. Not a deal breaker and something most people probably won't even notice, uh, but it's at least worth mentioning. And, um, you know, it's not annoying by any means, but uh, you can just, um, I, I could tell when the computer was on. 
Another little interesting thing about this computer is that it still comes with a CD-ROM drive, or DVD burner to be specific. Uh, I still have clients that ask for CD-ROM drives, uh, curiously enough. Um, so I'm sure most people don't use CD or DVDs in their computers anymore, but if you do, this machine has it. And in terms of build quality, this computer is pretty rock solid. It's made with hard plastics, all of which are, are um, you know, they feel uh, solid, like it's not going to fall apart on you and just start shedding, disintegrating on your desk or anything like that. It's uh, about on par build quality wise with the Lenovo. You know, both are sturdy machines that should should uh, last a long time and be faithful workhorses. We've sold a ton of these Acers and we haven't had any back for servicing yet. Acer seems to be doing a very good job. Uh, making sure that uh, their stuff lasts a while, unlike the HPs, which are built like crap. And uh, so comparing this to the to the uh, iMac, you know, an iMac has, um, you know, glass and aluminum, and it's very premium looking and feeling, uh, but this thing is also a third the cost of what an iMac is. It has the Intel onboard graphics. It's enough horsepower to run maybe small games, um, maybe like StarCraft, but you, you probably aren't going to want to run like any AAA titles on this thing uh, at full max graphics. So would I recommend the Acer Aspire Z series? Absolutely. And which one would I buy between the Lenovo Think Center and, and this one? I'd probably, if I had a choice, I'd probably pick the Lenovo uh, just because it's a, a more unique computer with a little more, it's, it's, it's very thoughtful uh, that, and, and Lenovo really did a, a good job with, with uh, interesting things and I, again recessing the camera, expandable storage, uh, the overall looks are very cool. Um, this thing is a clean classic look, modern, nothing wrong with that. But really what it boils down to is whichever you can find for a better price or whichever is available at the time, you really can't go wrong with either computer. Uh, they're both very good. Uh, but would I recommend this computer? Absolutely. It's reliable. Uh, it's got a lot of power to it. It's a good price. Uh, I think this is going to be a great machine for anybody in the market for an all-in-one computer.